Hi, this is Aníbal. Welcome to AB Witch Journal. As you can notice, I've had some rebranding. So yeah, welcome back to my channel. I'm very, very glad that you are here with me again to another book review. Uh, but before I start, I invite you to like, um, subscribe. Feel free to click on the little bell icon. So today I'm going to talk about this wonderful book. You can see it right here. Cunning Words, a grimoire of tales and magic by Marshall WSL, which is Sutherland. Incredible book. I think that this is a perfect book to get started in witchcraft, um, to learn more about recipes, to connect to different archetypes. And I'm going to talk more about this as the video continues. But yeah, I wanted to say that this book was incredible. It was a great experience. It was wonderful. I learned a lot and I feel that it doesn't matter where you might be from, you can connect with this book. As you continue reading, you can notice that the book is very universal. It connects with archetypes more than anything else. Of course, we can see things that are associated with traditional English witchcraft, like lighting in the spirit, contracting with a familiar, or yeah, like a witchcraft type of initiation. And the writer, uh, Marshall, <laughs> he mentions that he got his inspiration when it comes to talk about the mother in red, the mother in green, and the mother in black from Gemma Gary's books. Marshall gave their own interpretation to it and created newer or maybe more recent versions or or styles um, related to that story. I am the type of person that likes to create spells. I'm right now working on a grimoire. I'm working on my own oils and candles and whatever. This book has recipes, has formulae, but also has such a way to present a story to you and you understand and you connect with the story the, behind that recipe. It makes you understand so well the reasoning it makes you understand so well the reason of why that formula is done in that way. I like to change every recipe and spell that I read from a book so I can give my own signature. Typically, I change 50 or maybe 40% of the spell, but from this book, I barely have felt the need. It's so well created and it, I, it connected so well with me that I barely made changes at the time to perform a spell from this book. Again, I am a big fan of putting my own signature to spells, but I do feel that this one is perfect as it is. Now, something really cool from this book, as I showed you, this is the cover. Marshall created the illustrations, the rhymes, added color to it. He took care of all of it. There's no way for you to not connect with the magic of the book. As you got, you keep going through stories and recipes, you are going to see the illustrations, the drawings, the colors, and I feel that it makes easier the process of understanding what type of magic you are working with. So it's really cool to notice the artistry and also the reason of why a spell is done as it is. So it's cool. It, it's a great, I think that the book is very, very well structured and artistically speaking, it's very, very attractive. So I did enjoy that as well. Now the book is divided in three sections. The first section is the cunning tales. It's a succession of stories and these stories were created in a anthology, like an anthology way. Each story is independent from the prior one. There's a few stories that are connected, but you can read them as a standalone. Digest the spell that they are talking about in that story and continue without affecting your understanding of the prior story and the next one. However, as you go through the story, you can see connections between characters. You can see how a story might be related to one that you read or some or one that you are going to read in the future, but it does not affect the structure of the story. You can read the, the stories in whichever order you want, and that's okay. But I do feel that it's important to read the stories first before trying to practice the spells that appears in that first section, because I do feel like those stories give you a background of what you are going to be doing 
and what is supposed to be the result, if that makes sense. So as you keep reading through this first part of the book, you are going to learn how to meet the man in black, the devil. You will fly in the spirit. You are going to heal. You are going to charm. You are going to do glamour. Now, something that I could not help but notice is that we do not find any, even though we see witches with a lot of power and ability. Okay. Even though we see witches with a lot of power and abilities, we do not see any type of deity-like witch. We actually see a very human fortune wheel type of pattern. We see exaltation, power. We also see falling. We see persecution. We see death. No witch is invincible. In the same way that nobody in real life is um, omnipotent. So I want to bring that in because for me it's important to showcase reality even within this fantastic world that we are reading. One aspect that it is important for me to mention as well that really, really stands out is that in the first part of this book we see stories of different witches that have a social responsibility. These witches, I don't want to say that all witches in the world have a social responsibility, but many took the yeah let's say responsibility they took the task to help those that were in need so that was something beautiful to see and i think that that connects with me because i do think that any type of spiritual practitioner has a responsibility with society i i'm not saying that that has to be your reality if you like to be a sol um, solitary practitioner or maybe you are a witch that do not like to say, yes, I practice witchcraft. That's fine, that, you do you boo. But I like to connect with the social part of being a witch and help those that are in need. We can see solitary practitioners in the story. We can see practitioners that they use their gifts to help the town. We also see witches that were persecuted for being different, different aspects of real life, even in the stories, of course. I do not want to spoil all the different stories that you can find in the first part. There are so many. You are going to learn, as I say, charms, ointments. You are going to connect with different spirits. You are going to take your first steps towards becoming a witch. The cool thing about this first part is that it's going to give you an overall understanding. Some notion on divination how to create your tools like your magic wand there is a section that is not necessarily a story it's more like a parable of sorts and it's called the seven holy siblings and it gives you like a brief parable of each day of the week it teaches you what plant or what curio is associated with that day what the day might be used for and how to connect with that day so you can simply connect with the energy of that day or maybe you can even create a anthropomorphic representation of the day and connect with them as if they were a person so whatever you decide to do it's here that was genius it's a really easy way to learn the qualities of a day and the time to perform magic and that's also the, the the cool thing about these stories i'm not saying that this entire book is for kids but i can easily see myself if i had a godson, a niece, a nephew, kid, uh, someone that is younger, that I'm teaching them magic, I will easily tell them this one of the parables, one of the stories, as a way for them to capture and digest what I'm trying to teach them. Now, the second part of the book is more focused on rhymes. The name actually is Cunning Rhymes. You can also see stories. Um, there's actually one that turns around a character whose fire, father is violent against them and they perform a spell through the spirits of the river. Very cool story, very unique, but it's a rhyme at the end. I think that it was a very, very solid section. You have to go through each rhyme and you have to sit down and digest them. Now, English is not my first language, so there were rhymes that I had to sit down and, as I said, digest. I had to wonder okay what am i reading how am i supposed to do this i'm not saying that you will have to go through the same maybe you just get them and you will be like okay what's happened with this dude <laughs> now this chapter as i mentioned you are going to find different bells oils um, you are going to get the recipe of how to make your own cunning oil how to make puppets in the 
there is a particular spell that I find my favorite. I think that is my favorite in, of that section, um, which is the Song of the Cicadas. Uh, Cicadas? I don't know how to pronounce that word. But it was such a unique way to manifest. I never thought about using the song of, of an animal to bring someone in onto reality. It's so smart because Marshall literally did what many other cultures have done, connected with a spirit that is already nature. It's not creating something new, it's using what is already nature. And why not connecting a, a petition and an offering to that song as that animal is singing, that song is, uh, that petition is becoming real and more real. Um, it, it was majestic, it was incredible, and I think that it was a genius spell. The third part of the book, The Cunning Compendium, was the cherry on the top of this book, this creation. It's more complex. I do find some of the recipes, some, not all of them, um, some of the recipes and spells that appear in the third part of the book a little bit more complex than in the first episodes and the first chapters. Sorry, <laughs> this is not a book, a TV show. What the heck? <laughs> Yeah, find some of the recipes a little bit more complex. Some others are more simple. But this third part follows a more a pattern, a more solid structure. There are more various spells at the very beginning of the third chapter, but we can get to see the division of the modern in red spells, the modern in green spells, and the modern in black. Very practical. You can get so much information that there's a point that you feel overly fed. So this is not a book that I would recommend you to go through like in one week like I did. I do invite you to read it more than once, which I did. I actually reread the book two times. Please do so. There's a lot of content. There's a lot of spells. And you practically are going to find a spell for everything. And if you do not find a spell for what you are looking for, read the book. Read the stories you surely will receive a structure or pattern for you to create a spell. Now, this third book, in the, the third chapter, you are going to find recipes like how to craft your own flying ointment. Also, you can learn how to get your familiar. Um, in the book, the focus with the familiar is a plant or a stone. Do whatever works better for you, but the instructions here are really cool. I don't want to tell you what more is in the book. I want you to buy it and I want you to read it. Now, more specifically to the way that the book is written, it's very easy to read, very easy to follow. The only moment that I had some difficulty was with the rhymes. But again, the language barrier is a thing for me. So it was a little bit hard to go through on that side, but it was not impossible and definitely I feel that it worked better for me because I had to sit down and read slow and digest better. This is a book of stories and parables. There are fantasy elements that we practitioners, we witches, understand that are not real or not real as in presented in a fantasy story or a fantasy movie. <laughs> Let's place it like that. But the way that the parable is given, the way that the story is given, it's so well delivered that I almost believe that it, <laughs> that it was real, a factual situation. And also something that I did enjoy from the book is that it was perfectly crafted, was done in a way that you kept reading without stopping, without getting tired. It was not, yeah, overwhelming to read or to go through. Obviously, I will give it a five star out of five. I feel that this book is in my top five of practical books, favorite books. I personally connect with the book and I feel that this practice here reflected is my type of practice. I feel that that's how my magic works, how my magic was structured. Having this book now in my repertoire gives me more tools and more knowledge to do stuff that I didn't do before so yeah i really ask you to if you want to learn about it go buy the book support marshall read go through it and start creating your own grimoire start saving recipes put your own signature to it i'm sure that you're going to enjoy it and i'm sure that you're going to learn a lot from it <laughs> this was my book review from cunning words i really hope that you have enjoyed it please like comment subscribe 
tell me what do you think about this book give me a recommendation what other book should i read now again this is anibal see you next time